Dogs, Air Vetra 2019. And you know, when I started coming to this show back in 1991, avionics were pretty popular. That was back in the days of Orant C, even before GPS. Now in 2019, avionics are still popular at Oshkosh. And before the show even started, there were some major announcements from major manufacturers. Here's a look at a few, and as the show progresses, of course we'll cover more, but here's what you might look at if you're uh, coming to the show looking for major avionics. Well, let's start with Garmin, who's showing off yet another GPS navigator. It's the GNC 355. Think of this unit as a modern GNC 300 XL. That was an early gen IFR GPS map com that was a big success in its day. Now the Com Radio equipped 355 builds on the recently introduced Garmin GPS 175. That's a unit that doesn't have a comm radio. The new color Mapcom has a touchscreen interface, WAS approach capability, plays with a variety of third-party nav indicators, plus Garmin's G5 EFIS and G3X touch displays, and the unit has a two-inch high bezel that's intended to easily replace older panel-mounted GPS units. The GNC 355 starts at $69.95. Now, Garmin joins a variety of other manufacturers offering a new panel USB port. The $349 GSB-15 has two 18-watt USB Type-A charging ports. Now, Garmin says that the unit will charge two full-size tablets while you're using them at full backlighting. Garmin also sells an adapter to mount the port in an instrument cutout, or it can be mounted directly on a panel or in an interior sidewall. The unit's pretty small. If you own a G1000 equipped Textron, Beechcraft, Bonanza, or Baron, or a Cessna single, you can finally upgrade the system to Garmin's latest G1000 NXI. The newer NXI is a sizable improvement over the older platform. It has faster processors, better displays, an HSI map feature, and it has Garmin's FlightStream 510 wireless interface for two-way flight plan transferring and wireless database transferring from the Garmin Pilot app. The upgrade cost for Textron airplanes is $28,995. Meanwhile, the big news over at Dynon is more STCs through an approved model list that covers over 600 aircraft for the company's Skyview HDX certified retrofit flight deck. These are mainly single-engine piston aircraft covered on the AML, and that package includes a full autopilot, engine monitoring, ADSB out and in, and a variety of other functions. Now, the displays are available in both 10-inch and 7-inch variants to fit in a variety of instrument panels. The certified HDX was previously limited to Cessna Skyhawks and some Beechcraft Bonanzas, but the expanded AML gives the system longer legs in a competitive EFIS market. Meanwhile, over at ForeFlight, the company is showing yet another low-cost portable ADS-B receiver. The $299 Sentry Mini is made by UAvionics sports a compact chassis and uses USB power instead of a battery pack and that helps keep the size of the unit down. Now think of the GPS equipped Sentry Mini as the little brother of the full size Sentry introduced in last year's show but without a CO detector and without AHARS. It's small at roughly 3 by 2.3 by 0.6 inches and weighs 44 grams. The Mini receives ADS-B on both 978 and 1090 megahertz frequencies and only works with the ForeFlight app. Now the big surprise comes from Bendix King, who came to the show with certification in place for the AeroView Touch integrated primary flight display, the AeroCruise Autopilot, and the AeroFlight EFIS, which started years ago as a KI-300. Now Bendix King was showing the AeroView at Oshkosh last year, and now the system has an STC V approved model list for installation in 353 aircraft models. It comes standard with Honeywell's SmartView Synthetic Vision, a 10.1 inch touchscreen with near 4K resolution, electronic charts, and can display GPS data, traffic data, and weather from a variety of third party systems, including Garmin navigators. The AeroCruise 230 Autopilot has a touchscreen feature set and is intended to replace legacy KAP and KFC series 150, 200, and 225 autopilots by using the existing servos. Now the real news everyone has been waiting for is that the now approved KI-300 EFIS through an adapter can drive these legacy autopilots and replace the pricey KI-256 flight director gyro. Reporting from AirVenture 2019 in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, I'm Larry Anglosano. Thanks for watching.
Guten Tag from Aero Friedrichshafen in Germany. And before I go to Oshkosh this year, I'm going to check out AvWeb, and you should too.